Okay, Luke Ford here, live with Rabbi Rabs. This week's Torah portion is Pinchas. Uh, this is the 17th of Tammuz in the Hebrew calendar, lunar calendar. It's a fast day. It's Tuesday in the secular calendar, June 29th, 2010. And uh, Rabbi Rabs, what exactly are we fasting for on this 17th of Tammuz? Uh, first of all, just want to say it's good to be back here again, and thank everybody for tuning in. Um, thank you for your question. Uh, 17th of Tammuz is one of the four fast days that are actually uh, mentioned in the prophets. So we know that it's it's something that's been going on for a long, long time. And uh, the origin of it is that in the times of uh, when Nebuchadnezzar, when the, in the first temple, mm -hmm. when Nebuchadnezzar uh, surrounded Jerusalem, uh, the uh, the Cohens, the the priests, the high priest, they didn't have uh, the priests didn't have, they couldn't get sheep, mm -hmm. and they needed a sheep to do the daily uh, offerings in in the base of Migdash in the holy temple, and that was cut off because they they ran out. Nebuchadnezzar had surrounded the town, so uh, that was the that was the last day we ever did um, uh, offerings. On a daily basis in the uh, in the holy temple. Did they breach the walls? Was there any breaching the We're walls? We're getting to that. We're getting okay, to that. Sorry. They did breach the walls, but that was the next year. Okay. And then they came in the following year and they destroyed the whole base of Megiddo, and that was on Tisha B'av, on the ninth of Av. But the on the seventeenth of Thomas was the day that the uh, the the um, the offerings ended, and so that was what was mentioned in the prophets mm -hmm. as the seventeenth of Thomas, why we fast. Then. Fast forward 400 years, the Romans came, and the Romans breached the walls of Jerusalem on that same day, on the 17th of Tammuz, and then they went on to destroy the second temple mm -hmm. on Tisha B'Av. Mm -hmm. They both got destroyed on Tisha B'Av. Mm -hmm. After, uh, th this was the Dari the 400 years later, the question was, okay, we're fasting on the 17th of Tammuz, should it always be about the first temple, or now that they've breached the walls of the second temple, what should we do? The Marsha, I believe, is the one who explains that nowadays we do it because of the second temple being uh, the the second um, the second time mm -hmm. the, <laughs> the, walls the second being temple breached. the ball yeah. being breached by the Romans. So today we fast because of the walls being breached. That's what we, I always think of when I think right, of right exactly temple. because the walls were breached by the Romans. And the reason why we choose to do that today and not the reason that it's the original reason, I believe, is because I guess you know. We relate better to the second, the second temple falling because that was the last one. That's the one that's more recent to us. We can understand it better. Yeah. And Jewish fasts are tough. There's no, there's no drinking. You that's can't the drink hard water. one. Yeah, and with the lights on and it's hot in here, <laughs> it's going to be a test because I usually get very hot during my talks and I start sweating and I get something to drink, but there's no, no water today, which makes us different than let's say other people who fast. Right. Because they think, oh, well, as long as you go without food, you can at least have water, but we don't even do water. Right. And so th does it make you feel more spiritual and more like an angel when you fast? No. It makes me feel uh, uh, more tired because, see, I'm addicted to coffee in the morning. Right. And I didn't have my coffee, so, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to get a, I'm going to get a headache and I'm going to be, right after this is done, I'm going to go take a nap. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I don't understand the whole thing, you know, to be honest, because, yeah. you know, when they had, when they had these fasts initiated, you know, people were at a much higher level spiritually, and by fasting they could clean out themselves, and, you know, rise above the holy, rise, rise above the, the physical, and become mm -hmm. holy and all that. Today with me, are you kidding me? You separate me from water, coffee, and food for a whole day, I just turn into a headache, an exhausted animal, and I have to go to bed. And do you believe in the decline of the generations? Absolutely. Can it's, you explain to people what it is? Yeah, we call it uh, Eurydice Adorus, that each generation uh, from the time of Mount Sinai, for instance, let's start where there's a starting point, when they were at a huge high level and they learned Torah all day long and they were all righteous people living in the desert, each generation since that time, over the last 3,300 years, they dropped down a level. We, we don't believe in evolution we believe in de-evolution. And so today we're at the lowest possible uh, level as compared to all these previous ones. 
the, the, the Talmud tells us that the, uh, the head, the highest point of our, of our generation is like the fingernail, comes to like the fingernail of the previous generations. That they were at a much higher level. And that was written, that was written in the times of, uh, you know, 2,000 years ago. So yeah. you can imagine how low we are today. We don't, we can't even fathom how high these people were at. So, in the chat room, they want to know if we go cruising for checks together. Uh, no, but if we ever do, we should definitely bring a camera. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> video and, it. <laughs> and uh, Kunra wants to know a few of our favorite pickup, a few of the rabbi's favorite pickup lines. <laughs> um, I, I don't think I've ever had a pickup line that worked for me, so I don't know if I. Kunra suggests, "Hey, baby, stay overnight with me, and I'll wrap Taliban for you in the morning." <laughs> you rap Taliban? He'll write, tell uh, Kunrum, Kunrum. Yeah. Kunrum yeah. he can write my material for me, yeah. how's that, you know? <laughs> but you really do pull in the checks, I have to say that. Looking at your Facebook page, you have all these <laughs> women who are very passionately engaged in, in what goes on. <laughs> I, I got to hand it to you. I Thanks. Thought, you know, I, I, I mentioned it in the interview. You did, I did, I, but I now said, I've seen it. Yeah, you've seen it, yeah. My own um, eyes. Yeah, and some of these women are actually single, which is, you know... <laughs> yeah. Um, they just want to release your pain. Yeah. I, I think, like, a lot of it is because I'm safe. Yeah, you're unavailable. I'm unavailable. You're like a serial killer in prison. Yeah, I'm safe. It's on the internet, you know. Right. You know, um, it, it, that's, that's, that's basically what it is. I think I'm a safe... It's everybody wants to be, you know, buddies with me because yeah. I'm a safe guy. I'm it's like you're gay. I mean, you're not gay, but it's, you might as well be. I'm like a caged tiger. You are a caged tiger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a caged tiger, and as long as, like, those steel bars are locked and everything, and you, you, you can hear me roar, but you can't, but I'm never going to get out. Yeah. You know, I, think, I think every woman digs that. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I think if I got out of the cage, I'd scare everybody away. Fascinating. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just hyp hypothesizing. So, did you have any thoughts on last week? Yes, thanks for asking. Uh, last week we discussed, um, I was saying, I was talking about the corroborators. Is that the word? Collaborators? Co collaborators. Collaborators. Um, and how the leaders in the reform movement mm -hmm. were, were not exactly uh, helpful to the Jews who were getting uh, slaughtered in the, in the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. And you said, uh, you asked me, uh, well, can I give you an example of that? Yeah, and yeah. I and I said, yeah, let me go look it up. And mm -hmm. I've got like information here if you want great, to. Great, great, go for it. Okay, I thought, and rather than just like listing off a laundry list of the different, uh, I'd start off with just one person. Yeah. Because I want to pick this person in particular because uh, we're in L.A. and I just thought, you know, it might be an interesting thing to discuss. Yeah. Guy's name is Stephen S. Weiss. Famous, 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 famous guy. American Reform Rabbi. There's the Stephen S. Weiss Temple in Bel Air, which is, has more members than any other synagogue in the world. Does it really? Yeah, like 30,000 members. Thank you for that interesting anecdote, because I didn't know that. I didn't realize how popular it was. Okay, then this is imperative that we need to know who this guy was. I just thought he was, you know, it's a, pop, it's a somewhat popular thing mm -hmm. here in, in town and lets education people here in L.A. I didn't realize it's the biggest... You have yeah. A, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. Okay, let's talk about it. It's in part because they require everyone who sends kids to their day school to join the t temple. Okay. So they've got a huge day school. they got a huge day There's school. A Milken High School and a, and a day school. Oh, Milken High School is yeah, part of... Part, why? Yeah, You know yeah. a lot of things. I don't know these things. So you're good to have. All right, let's talk I about... I used to go there many years ago. You went there? Yeah, oh, yeah. boy, this is even better. All right. We need to know... We need to know who uh, Stephen S. Weiss yeah. was, okay? And this, I, I'm venture to guess that of those 30,000, I bet you very few people really know what this guy was about and what right. this guy did, right. okay? So let's talk about it. You mentioned he was a reform rabbi, and he was uh, one of the biggest leaders in the reform movement. He wasn't just a rabbi. He was a leader in the reform movement. He helped create what was called the, what's called the American Jewish Congress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's going to take me about five minutes. That's fine. It's okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he, which formed in the late 20s. Oh, excuse me. It, 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 it formed early in the, in the 20th century, and they eventually made him the president of it in the late 20s, and he served as the president until he died, which was sometime after World War II. I would think 